Hi, my name's Andy, and uh, this is a talk about um, uh, how to use and what is uh, a really fun program called Vim, which is uh, useful for uh, editing text files and for uh, testing your finger and memory skills. Um, I just want to encourage you how much fun it is to use, um, and I'm going to take you through a few of the uh, commands to use it. So let's get started. So I'm just going to type colon bn to go to the next uh, buffer that I've got open in Vim. And uh, the first thing you need to know before you do anything else um, is if you encounter Vim, especially if you're on some obscure Unix system, maybe you're in, you're, you find yourself in VI, um, a lot of people don't know how to get out. Um, so here's how to get out. Don't panic. Press escape a few times until you're in normal mode, which we'll find out about in a minute. And then type colon q exclamation mark, and that will get you out. Um, if you want to save your work before you get out, type colon w q. Um, most of the time, typing one of them will get you out um, back to where you started. So don't be scared. Okay, let's do that now. Colon q exclamation mark, and let's open up some more files. Okay, so uh, why do I love using Vim? Uh, mainly because it's fast, and I really hate waiting around for my computer to do anything. Um, it's also, so when I say fast, I mean it's fast, uh, it's responsive, and also it's fast to use. Um, it's driven entirely by the keyboard. I tend to use it uh, in a terminal where I don't really have the mouse, I, I can't use the mouse to control it at all. There is a version of it that where you can use the mouse to click to decide where your cursor is. Um, I don't like that so much, but you can do that too. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. It's got um, commands to do all kinds of things. Uh, it's completely programmable. Um, you can you can write macros for it, and there are thousands of macros for it. Uh, and it's good fun. It's good fun learning how to use it. So let's go to the next buffer with colon bn. Um, get me out of the way. Um, Vim is fast. Um, it was written a long time ago, um, back in 91, I believe, based on v VI, which was written uh, before I was born, um, which makes it extremely old. Uh, and back then, you didn't have as much CPU, so uh, things had to work fast, so, and, and no one's bothered to uh, improve it too much since then, so it's still really fast. And by the way, it's very well tested, um, and it generally does uh, what it should do. It may not be what you expect it to do. So, let's go to the next buffer. What do I mean by fast? Well, when you're doing stuff, uh, it responds immediately, even if you're doing complicated things. You can load up large files. Um, let's get me out of the way again. Um, you can load up lots of files. Um, you can load up files with long lines, and it, it copes very well with all of that. Let's do an at colon to repeat the last colon command. At colon. Um, here we go. Uh, the last colon command was bn, which moved me to the next buffer. And at colon just repeats that. So yeah, get, Vim is keyboard driven. Uh, everything is done with the keyboard. Um, there are some keyboard shortcuts, um, but it's not massively focused on keyboard shortcuts. It's really focused on uh, changing to different modes and typing in uh, named commands like a Unix shell. Um, the fact that everything can be done by the keyboard uh, means that you can, it's very easy for, uh, to write automation. You can basically um, write a macro which is just the list of the keystrokes you would have pressed, uh, including keyboard shortcuts and mode switches and everything else. At colon. Um, so let's have a look at the, what modes are available. Well, there's normal mode, which is the mode we're in at the moment. Um, and that's for getting around the text. Um, and if you ever want to get back into normal mode, just press escape. Uh, there's insert mode, which you basically use for typing stuff in, which is kind of like the mode that all other editors are in all the time. Um, there's visual mode for making selections of um, pieces of text. There are some other modes, but those are the most important ones. Right, let's press at at to repeat the last at command. Okay, so a little bit more about normal mode. Uh, you can move around using uh, the arrow keys, like this, or you can use H, J, K, and L um, for keyboards that don't have 
arrow keys, and real hardcore VIM people only use them. Um, you can use W to go to the next word. So if I press W, you can see I move to the beginning of the next word. If I press E, I move to the end of the next word. Um, I can go back to the previous empty line by pressing curly bracket. I can go to the next empty line by pressing curly bracket. That's very useful for navigating code, by the way. Um, you can jump around in functions quite easily doing that. Uh, to go to the top, I can do GG. To go to the very bottom, Shift G. Um, I can go to the start of a line. So if I'm somewhere on a line, if I press carry, I go to the first piece of writing on the line. If I press zero, I go to the absolute very start of the line. To go to the end of the line, I do a dollar. If I want to skip between two brackets, you see Vim's highlighting my brackets for me there. That's some highlighting I've got turned on. If I want to jump from the front to the back bracket, I press percent, and that jumps me. Now I'm at the end of the line. Um, no, now I'm at the uh, not end of the line. Around two percent, I'm at the end of the line. Um, if you want to do the same thing you've just done again, uh, just press dot, and it does it again. So that's uh, that's your kind of first level of automation that you can do. If you're doing something repeatedly. Um, do it once and then press dot and it'll do it again. Okay, um, searching around. So, if you want to search for something, for example, we want to search for ear, we should press slash and then E-A-R, return, and it finds it. And then if I press N, I can jump to the next match and the next match, like that. If I want to go backwards, for example, if I want to search for T-T-E, um, I can go backwards. And if I press N, it goes, it keeps on going backwards. If I press Shift N, it goes in the reverse direction. So in this case, forwards. Uh, okay. And let's find out a little bit more about normal mode. Uh, excuse me for covering up that bit of writing. So if you want to, uh, 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 start editing text, you want to go into insert mode. So you need to press either I, or capital I, or A, or capital A, those go into insert mode in slightly different ways, either insert or append, is the um, shorthand way of remembering that. If you want to delete a line, so let me show you going into insert mode. So at the moment I'm in normal mode, when I press I, I'm in insert mode, it says insert at the bottom there, and I can start typing. If I want to delete a line, I go onto that line, I press DD, and there goes the line. If I want to make a line more indented, I press arrow, arrow. If I want to make it less indented, I press the other way, arrows. If I want to switch the case of a character, for example this T here, I press tilde. And it switches case and it goes on to the next character. Excuse me. Which means that I can carry on pressing tilde and keep on switching case. Um, if I want to delete something, I can press D and then uh, a movement command. So, for example, if I want to delete uh, the rest of this word, I can press D and then E to go to the end of the word. So you press D and then a movement command, and wherever you were going to move to actually gets deleted instead. If I want to um, delete something but also go into insert mode, for example, I want to delete the whole of this word, delete, and start typing something else instead, I can press D, W, and then I'm already in insert mode. Oops, sorry. Of course, I press DW, I meant to press CW. If I press CW, um, I'm already in insert mode, I can start typing. Um, if I want to replace an individual character, I find this really useful sometimes. For example, I want a plus instead of this L here, I just press R, and then plus. I'm not in insert mode, I've just changed that one character. Um, okay, other things you can do. If you want to repeat the same thing you've just done lots of times, for example, I want to change the case, I press tilde once, and then... Uh, <coughs> and that will re replace 1. If I want to do it 10 times, I can say 10 tilde, and it will do what I was asking it to do 10 times instead of once. So you just type the number before the thing you're going to do, and it repeats it that many times. So if I want to go forward 20 words, I type 20 W, and I jump forward 20 words. Okay, yet more you can do in normal mode. You can do undo and redo, and you've seen me doing that. So if I delete a line, and then change my mind. Uh, I can just press U to undo, and if I change my mind again, I can press Control R, and it goes away again. Uh, and we've already seen, if you press dot, that repeats the last thing you did. Okay, yet more things you can do uh, in normal mode. You can 
uh, copy stuff, uh, which is called yanking, um, and that starts with a Y. Uh, and that's the explanation for why these commands have Y's in them. So if I want to copy a line, let's go up to that line using search. If I want to copy it, I just press YY. If I want to paste it, I press P. And now you can see I've got a copy of that line. If I want to copy just one word, I can say YW, and that copies the word copy. And then if I press Shift P, I can insert it just before um, where the cursor is. Um, and you can see that. So if I press Shift P again, I get another copy and so on. Um, so that's again, it's like the uh, D and then a movement command. If I press Y and then dollar, that means copy to the end of the line. I go to the end of the line and paste it um, by pressing P. Um, you can see I copied everything to the end of the line from where I was. And Y, Y is just a shortcut to copy the entire line. Um, yeah, two types of paste. Lowercase p pastes after here. Uppercase p pastes just before this character, or this line, if we're talking line-wise. Okay, what's next? Um, okay, so how to get into insert mode to actually type in some text. Um, well, you can press I and start typing. So, just like that. Or if I... Uh, put myself on the E. If I press A, I start typing after the character I was on. If I press Shift I, I go to the beginning of the line and start typing. That's very convenient. And if I press Shift A, I go to the end of the line and start typing. Um, and my absolute favourite keyboard shortcut, once I'm in insert mode, I can type COM and then I just press Control P and it lists words that are nearby uh, that I might want to use as a completion, and the default one is the one that it's seen most recently, which is the word completion. So I, manage, I get, I get, uh, uh, I do a lot of my programming using just purely textual completion in Vim, without any clever understanding of the code. Uh, just Control P when you're in insert mode. Bob, your uncle. All right. So what else have we got? Well, along with insert mode, we've also got visual mode. Visual mode is intended for you to be able to uh, select some text which you're then going to do something to. So for example, if I want to select the word enter, I can press V and then I can move around with the arrow keys to, to change what I'm selecting or I can press E to go to the end of enter. Once I've selected it, I can use commands like Y uh, to cut to yank it. So I've yanked it and now I can just paste it over here. And I've yanked it. Um, you can also do this with a whole line, so if I press Shift V and start moving around, I can select lots of lines. Uh, and really cool feature, which all editors ought to have, but some madly don't. If you press Control V, you go into rectangular selection mode, which means now I'm selecting a, a rectangle of stuff, which I could just get rid of with X, um, or I can insert something before if I want to. Uh, indent a whole load of lines. I can press Shift I once I'm uh, in that rectangular select mode. Insert some spaces. When I press Escape, uh, all of those lines get indented. Uh, that's uh, not as good as uh, Jedit, the other editor I used to use, uh, because you can't see what you're doing. But it's one of the few places where I wish Vim was just a tiny little bit cooler. But it gets the job done. Okay, uh, if you want to select stuff, you just use the same movement commands as before, so like W to go to the next word, or E to go to the end of the next word, uh, and then to actually do stuff, as I was saying, uh, you can you can do you can yank, you can do an X uh, to delete things and so on, like, like in other modes. Okay, another mode that you need to know about: command line mode. Um, well, if, if you're in normal mode and you want to start typing a command, you press colon and then the command. So, for example, if I want to um, search uh, on this line for the word foo and replace it with bar, I want to type colon and I start. You see my cursor appears at the bottom there. And I can type s foo bar and say g to replace all occurrences. And you can see it happens. Um, if I want to do that all through the document, instead of typing uh, just colon s, I do colon percent s. Uh, and it does it all all through the document. And in fact, there's only one foo here. If I do it with a name, it'll be easier to see. So percent has uh, name and bar, and um, we'll replace name with bar all through my document. 
uh, other th other commands you're going to need to know. Um, so you end up using percent s a lot. Uh, uh, if you want to save, you do colon w. If you want to load in a file, you do colon e, and then the name of the file. And you get tab completion on those things, by the way, which is really useful. Uh, colon ls shows me all the open files, which is all the files in this presentation here. Um, you've seen colon bn, that takes you to the next file. Colon bp takes you to the previous. Colon bn takes me to the next one, back to where I was. If I want to jump to a particular line number, I can do colon 2, and it jumps to line number 2. Colon 5 jumps to line number 5. And then we've already seen colon Q uh, is a way of exiting. So, next slide. Um, Vim is extremely powerful. There are far too many features for me to go through them uh, in this video. But here are some examples. Um, you can do some really cool splitting of the window. Um, like this. Now I've got two windows, both um, showing me either the same document or different documents. Close that again with colon Q. Um, you can also have tabs, which I don't know a lot about, but are another way of looking at. Um, I think it's ways of uh, it's collections of split windows. Um, you can do search and replace interactively. Um, you you can copy and paste not just into the kind of default place, but into uh, so-called registers. Um, you can create markers in your documents. You can jump to like bookmarks. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff around customizing what gets highlighted. Um, you can show the line numbers. You can fold code and things like that. Um, you can do syntax highlighting and stuff. Compile on demand. Uh, loads and loads of built-in commands. There's loads and loads of commands built into um, the original VI, which Vim is like an improved version of. And loads of uh, other commands in Vim. Uh, and loads and loads of plugins, uh, which is what I'm going on to talk about here. So, um, Vim is extremely programmable. You, everything you can do in Vim, you can do in a script, in a very straightforward and easy to understand way. Um, and everything you do can be recorded. You can record a macro and then play it back. And once you've recorded that macro, that can be turned into a script easily as well. Um, Vimscripts.org is one place that has plugins. I don't know whether there are others. There are loads of them. Um, examples of what you can do. Uh, compile on the fly. Uh, all kinds of ones for the different ways of listing your buffers and navigating between them. Um, you can uh, you can have a, a invisible eclipse running in the background and then do your um, code navigation and refactoring that Eclipse does, but within Vim, uh, invisibly, so you don't have to do, uh, look at the Eclipse UI. Um, you can get code completion plugins, um, and loads and loads of stuff that I don't even know about. Uh, and the real point of this presentation is not that Vim is very powerful and fast and so on, but that it's really fun to use. And my proof uh, of that for you is that there is a whole website which is a game which just involves using Vim uh, to edit text. Uh, it's vimgolf.com, it is great fun. I'm going to do a little demonstration for you. So let's get me out of the way yet again. So here are some numbers um, uh, which are useful to us but are in the wrong form. We want them to get into a form like this. So these are the same numbers but now they're um, uh, comma separated pairs um, with brackets around them. And the column on the left there is the first uh, row in the previous thing we were looking at. So let's go, have a, go and look at that. So the challenge is press as few keys as possible to get this uh, text to look like um, the text that I just showed you with the two columns. Um, and here's my solution that you can see um, under my name on Vimgolf. Okay, so here's my solution. I don't take uh, credit for this solution. This is my best one that I currently have on, um, on this challenge on Vimgolf. I'm sure I copied it from someone else. Um, but anyway, this is this is uh, my best score at the moment. Uh, so the first thing I do is I'm going to start recording a macro because I'm going to do the same thing multiple times. So I press Q, and then I press the name of the macro. So I'm going to call it Q just to, to, so that I can press Q Q. Uh, so now I'm recording a macro. And everything I do gets recorded. So I press I to start uh, typing, and then I I create a square bracket to go at the beginning. Then escape to come out of insert mode. And then I press plus to go to the next line, and then D, capital E, to delete that number, and then minus to go to the previous line, capital E to go to the end of this number, 
shift, uh, not shift A, just lowercase a to start typing after the three, then comma space, control R to paste in the thing that I deleted. So to say what I want to paste, control R means paste something. To, to say well, the thing I deleted, I use the default register, which is where it got put. So I press quote, and then close the square bracket, and press return. And I've finished what I'm doing, so I press escape. And now to say I've, I've finished recording my macro, I press Q. Now I want to do the same macro, macro, do exactly the same thing 15 more times. So I type 15, 1, 5, and then at Q. Uh, and then all I've got to do left is tidy up the two lines at the end. So I'll just delete those lines manually. You can see I, uh, I, I've, I've got that buffer to look almost exactly like uh, how I wanted it to look. Uh, yes, Vim Golf, on, believe me, is quite a fun game. Um, just typing text is Vim. Okay, if you'd like more information, um, yeah, check out my YouTube page, username AJ Balaam. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, find out about new videos and blog posts. You can look at the projects I've been working on, artificialworlds.net. Um, you can see my blog at artificialworlds.net slash blog. And finally, thank you very much to Chank for this uh, cool font, sarcastic robot that I've been using um, for this video. And uh, see you next time.